Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless forget about the summer of love because it's the summer of divorce wow! agt host sofia vergara and hubby joe maganello just called it quits as did ariana grande and husband dalton gomez Kevin Costner and his wife of nearly 20 years, Christine Baumgartner, recently said, I don't, with Costner being ordered to pay $130,000 in child support a month. And today, actress Reese Witherspoon's divorce to talent agent Jim Toth was officially finalized. Divorce attorneys say there are extra stressful factors that could lead to breakups this summer. One is the actors and writers strike, which is bringing Hollywood to a standstill. And that could also cause extra marital tensions at home. Extra stress, financial pressures, the fact that nobody is doing any work, so they're sitting around just staring at each other, getting tired of each other. And three years of the pandemic lockdown didn't help either. When people spend a lot of time together, they get sick of each other. So it definitely could be COVID contributed. As for Sophia and Joe, many aren't surprised they only lasted seven years. There's a period of time that couples tend to get tired of each other, and it's around seven years. So divorce lawyers have dubbed it the seven year itch. This divorce attorney has advice for any celebrity about to say, I do. Get a prenup. <laughs> There's a great likelihood that if you're a celebrity, you're going to get divorced. During the end times, the Bible says that wickedness and evil will run rampant all over the world. Jesus warned that by resisting these things, that Christians would be hated by all nations. Jesus said the world hated him first, so that we should expect that the world will hate us as well. Satan isn't masking his intentions anymore, is he? Battle lines are being drawn, and people are choosing sides. If you know someone who doesn't know the Lord, tell them. Time is definitely running out for them to come to Jesus. Revelation 12.12 12. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, because he knows that he has a short time. A good indicator we are living in the last moments of human history is that Satan has infiltrated our society in every way possible. We must understand Satan hates us because we are created in the image of Almighty God. Satan wants not only to be like God, but wants to exalt himself above God as we read in 2 Thessalonians 2.4, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Satan has worked his way onto the TV screen where he is portrayed as a fun and caring guy on the path of redemption, where women love him and men want to be him. To be a Christian today is to rebel against these vices and to speak out against the holly weird experience that is beginning to invade almost every aspect of our lives and society. Satan is busy deceiving mankind, and mankind is falling for his deceptions. 2 Corinthians 4, 3 and 4 But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. Make no mistake about Satan. There is no redemption for him. His fate has been sealed, as we read in Revelation 20.10. The devil, who deceived them, was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Satan wants to take as many people to hell with him as possible. 1 Peter 5.8 Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Former porn star Mia Khalifa spoke out about the institution of marriage this week. I know what you're thinking, but hear me out. She's had a couple of bad marriages, a couple broken engagements, and what she said struck a nerve. We should not be afraid to leave these men we are not stuck with these people. Marriage is not a sanctimonious thing. It is, it is paperwork. It's something, it's, it's, it's a commitment you make to someone. But if you feel like 
you're not getting anything from that commitment and you're trying, you gotta go, you gotta go. I know what you're thinking, Jesse. Why should we care what a porn star thinks about marriage? Well, you shouldn't care about who she is, but you should care about what she's saying because what she's saying gets to the heart of a decades long liberal media social psyop that marriage is a broken and dated institution. In fact, some say today women don't even need men. She said, a woman without a man is like a fish without a bicycle. <laughs> I mean, we love you guys, but the truth of the matter is that we could function without-, without Radical feminists actively seek to overthrow any vestige of male dominance in society to the point of opposing the biblical roles of husbands and wives, defending abortion on demand, and promoting lesbianism. Radical feminists deny there is any difference between men and women, teaching that any perceived differences between the sexes are due solely to social conditioning. The Bible teaches otherwise. The Bible teaches us that there is a hierarchy that is to be followed as we read in 1 Corinthians 11.3. But I want you to know that the head of every man is Christ, the head of woman is man, and the head of Christ is God. The Bible teaches us that although males and females are equal in relationship to Christ, the scriptures give specific roles to each in marriage. The husband is to assume leadership in the home. This leadership should not be dictatorial, condescending, or patronizing to the wife, but should be in accordance with the example of Christ loving the church, as we read in Ephesians 5, 25-28. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. Christ loved the church with compassion, mercy, forgiveness, respect, and selflessness. In the same way, husbands are to love their wives Wives are to submit to the authority of their husbands, as we read in Ephesians 5.22-24. through 24. Wives, submit to your own husbands, as to the Lord. For the husband is head of the wife, as also Christ is head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. A believing woman, who is seeking to obey God, should remember that she has equal access to all spiritual blessings in Christ, as we read in Galatians 3.28. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Men and women have a God-given privilege to fulfill the plan He has set for us. Rebellion against that plan and the arrogance that seeks to put self above God's word brings difficult consequences. We see those consequences in the destruction of the relationship between husbands and wives, the destruction of the family, and the loss of respect for human life. In recent years, we have seen the rise of a society that is so concerned with political correctness and is overly sensitive to being offended. If men and women would just walk in obedience to God's word, radical feminism would be seen for what it is, and the harmony that God has ordained between men and women would result. So what's behind the push to create more single women in American society? Well, starting with the Great Society and continuing today, the federal tax code and the welfare state encourages women to stay single as long as possible. Are you poor and single? Here's an income tax credit. Are you a single mom? There's a child tax credit. And then there's a half dozen welfare programs all designed to incentivize single ladies syndrome. But that's not all. The left wants to take away incentives for married couples, too. I also suggest that we separate out some of the legal perks of marriage so that single people and other kinds of families get these benefits. Marriage should not be the gateway to social and economic privilege anymore. That time is done. Money's a big factor, too. The longer women stay single, the longer they stay in the workforce. And by the time they're in their 30s, they have to spend a fortune on fertility treatments when they don't even need a husband actually at this point. This was explained to us earlier. They want us to put off having a family so that we're gonna spend big money in order to have that family later on after putting our career first for decades. A major reason driving the single lady syndrome in politics? If you're a single man, you vote Republican. If you're a married man, you vote Republican. If you're a married woman, you vote Republican. But if you're a single woman, 
You vote Democrat by an astounding margin, a margin so wide, single women have become the driving force in the Democrat base. If Republicans want to retake the White House, they don't need ballot harvesters, they need matchmakers. Marriage isn't just good for the Republican Party, it's good for you too. A study from the University of Chicago found that married couples are 30% happier than their unmarried friends. They're also wealthier and healthier. But what do I know? Marriage has only worked for like thousands of years. Traditional family is under attack like no other time in history. God instituted marriage between one man and one woman, and it is very holy to him. Why is marriage between a man and a woman so sacred to God? Genesis 2, 23 and 24. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Ephesians 5, 31 through 33. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let each one of you in particular so love his own wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. By mystery, Paul means the hidden plan of God that has come to fulfillment in Christ Jesus, as we read in Ephesians 3.9. And to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God, who created all things through Jesus Christ. Thus, the Apostle Paul's quotation about marriage from Genesis 2 and Ephesians 5.31 ties into the relationship between Christ and his church. Paul's meaning is profound. He interprets the original creation of the husband and wife union as itself modeled on Christ's forthcoming union with the church as his body, as we read in Ephesians 5.23. For the husband is head of the wife, as also Christ is head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, marriage from the beginning of creation in Genesis 1 was created by God to be a reflection of and patterned after Christ's relation to the church. Thus, Paul's commands regarding the roles of husbands and wives do not merely reflect the culture of his day, but also the present. God's ideal for all marriages at all times as exemplified by the relationship between the Bride of Christ, the Church, and Christ Himself, the Son of God. The biblical concept of marriage is a oneness between two individuals that pictures the oneness of Christ with His Church. Satan is busy in these last days, destroying marriage in every way possible. Satan hates marriage, and in particular, he hates Christian marriages, because believers display the Gospel and glorify God in their marriage. Satan aims to destroy Christian marriages because such opposition hinders the witness of Christ to the world. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with Him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in Him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns 
salvation. Repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.